All right, in this video, I'm going to be going through the practice with Venn diagrams. And basically, what you're doing here is taking what we learned about Venn diagrams and the basic relationships between two sets. And, uh, and now we're going to do it in a more practical or in more practical types of problems. And you need to put on your thinking caps because you're going to have to think some of these things through. If you jump too fast, you'll have some problems, especially when you get to the last problem. So let's see how you did if you did try these already. All right, so on number one, it says, use the Venn diagram to describe each region. Well, we have two sets here, so there's really two qualities here. Are you a student? Are you a parent? And in each of these four regions, we can say something in regards to both of those. So for region one, these are students who are not parents. Okay, so in each case, you should say something about being a student or being and, and or being a parent. Number two, well, that's the region that represents students who are parents. Region three, those are the parents who are not students. And finally, region four, these are people who are not students or parents. All right, on number two, it says, use the Venn diagram to answer the following questions. Children at a birthday party had a choice of cake, ice cream, or both. The results are recorded in the Venn diagram. So uh, if you look at the diagram, it says, how many chose ice cream? Well, anybody that's in the ice cream circle chose ice cream. So there's a total of 14 there. Now, some of them may have chosen cake, but we don't care about that. If they chose ice cream, they need to be counted here. And so that would be 14. How many chose ice cream or cake? Well, remember the word or indicates one or the other or both. So basically, we're going to take all the people that chose ice cream and combine that with all the people that chose cake. So again, that's going to include everybody here. And so what's that, 14 and 10 or 24? How many chose neither? Oh, you know what? I didn't erase this part here. Let me get that out of there. All right, so um, how many chose neither? That's these five out here. And then how many children were at the party? Well, if you add up all the numbers here, you've got 14 and 10 is 24 and another 5 is 29. All right, let's move on to the next slide. It says a group of students were surveyed to see if they were taking an English or math course. The results are indicated in the Venn diagram. How many were taking English? Well, again, anybody that's in the English circle is to be counted, so that's going to be 37. How many were taking English and math? Well, that would be the, the ones that are doing both. And so that would be 12. How many were taking math but not English? That would be these guys, because they're not taking English. And so that's 18. How many were surveyed? If you add up all these numbers, this is 30 and 25, 55, 65, 66. All right, number four. So I would encourage you to try number four. Think it through. Again, be careful. Make sure when you get your, or your uh, Venn diagram filled out that it fits all the requirements. All right, let's see how you did. So there's 40 musicians, 20 played the piano, 25 played the guitar, and seven played both. In fact, the piano and the guitar, those are my favorite instruments. Unfortunately, I never learned how to play either one of those. So we have a piano circle and a guitar circle. And really, the secret to these is you always want to work your way inside out. I don't know if you remember the... Disney cart or some cartoon inside out. So we're going to work inside out. And so we want to first put the seven in that played both. So now when it says 20 people played the piano, 
Well, we know we already have 7 here. 20 minus 7 would be 13. And so, in fact, there's 13 in this section here, which gives you a total of 20. And then if 25 played the guitar, well, that means everything in here has to add up to 25. And so that would be 18, and 7 would give you 25. So 18 go in there, and then don't forget, we still have the people that didn't play piano or guitar. So if we take all of these people and add them up and subtract them from 40, whoops, let's see, uh, so this is 20 and 18 would be 38. That means there's two out here. All right, let's go on to the next one. So now that we did that last problem, you ought to be able to do this one here. So why don't you do that and then check the video. All right, let's see how you did. So we have our band and our sports team circles. We're gonna put our uh, 60 that uh, were in the band and played sports. And if there were, uh, let's see, in the band, there were 85, and we already have 60 here, so that would leave another 25 over here. And then in the sports team circle, we know there's a total of 200 that played sports, and there's already 60 in here, so 60 from 200, that means there's another 140 in the sports team's circle in this region here. And finally, um, Let's see, there's 320 students total, and if you add up all the numbers in here, you got 60 and 140, that's 200, and another 25 is 225, and when you subtract, you get 95. So these are the guys that didn't participate in either activity. All right, let's move on to the next slide. All right, so here it says, of 120 high school seniors, 80 play sports at their school, and 30 are in the band. All right, so um, I've asked you three questions here, and I just want to warn you, all the problems we've done up to this point have been with overlapping sets. Those are not the only relationships we have. We talked about four. And so I would encourage you to to because uh, sometimes we kind of get locked into a certain mode just be prepared for the fact that you could be having other types of relationships where they're not overlapping sets you could have uh, a proper subset relationship you could have disjoint sets um, you're not going to have equal sets but that's my tip for you and so let's see what you can do with number six, and then I would encourage you to look at the video. Okay, so let's see. What is the least number of students who could be playing sports and are in the band? You should have said zero. So this is the case where the two sets have nothing in common. Maybe this school has some kind of rule where you can only participate in one or the other because these are both very demanding activities. I've known people that have done both. Well, if that's the case, you've got 80 in the sports circle and 30 in the band. Since there's 120 high school seniors, um, we already have 110, so if you subtract, you get 10. And so this would, this would be the answer to letter A. And you notice we do not have overlapping circles. Let's look at B. What is the greatest number of students who could be playing sports and are in the band? Draw a Venn diagram to support your answer. Well, let's see how you did. The answer is 30. Isn't it possible we could have a relationship like this where we have everybody in the band is in the sports circle? And so all 30 band members are playing sports. Well, since there's 80 playing sports total, then that means there must be 50 in here. And then people outside of that, well, that's 80 from 120. That leaves 40 out here that, that are not doing either. All right, so that would be a visual or a Venn diagram 
that supports our answer. Letter C, what is the greatest number of students who could be doing neither? Well, notice in this case we had 10, in this case we had 40. The only other relationship you might look at is where we have overlapping sets, but you're going to find you're never going to get less than, or I should say, you're never going to get 40 or more, except for in this situation here. So the answer is 40, and our diagram is the same. All right, that's it for this video.